If you are involved totally, sex disappears because sex is a safety valve. When you have energy unused, then sex becomes a haunting thing around you. When total energy is used, sex disappears. And that is the state of brahmacharya, of virya, of all your potential energy flowering. No nation was ever so virtuous as each believes itself, and none was ever so wicked as each believes the other. Everyone wants to command, and no one wants to obey, and this is owing to the absence of that wonderful brahmacharya system of your. First, learn to obey. The command will come by itself. Always first learn to be a servant, and then you will be fit to be a master. As a king is no king without a treasury, subjects and an army, as a flower is no flower without fragrance, as a river is no river without water, so also a man is no man without brahmacharya, ahara, nidra, baya and methuna, food, sleep, fear and copulation are common to both animals and men. That which differentiates a man from an animal is principle of cosmic order, discrimination and self-inquiry. Knowledge and self-inquiry can be secured only by the preservation of energy. If a man has not got these qualifications, he should really be reckoned as a veritable animal only. Without strict brahmacharya, it is not possible for anyone to hold fast to great ideals, to secure the full development and vitality of body, brain and mind. Brahmacharya is essential. Those who observe strict brahmacharya develop a strong memory and a remarkable capacity for understanding. By means of brahmacharya, a special nerve is developed which brings about these wonderful powers. Do you know why our great teachers have laid so much emphasis on brahmacharya? It is because they knew that if a man fails in this respect, everything is lost. The strict brahmacharan does not lose his vitality. He may not look like a great athlete, but the development of his brain is so fine that his capacity for grasping supersensuous things is remarkable. All the forces that are working in the body in their highest become ojas. You must remember that it is only a question of transformation. The same force which is working outside as electricity or magnetism will become changed into inner force. The same forces that are working as muscular energy will be changed into ojas. The yogis say that that part of the human energy which is expressed as sex energy in sexual thought when checked and controlled, easily becomes changed into ojas, and as the Miladhara guides these, the yogi pays particular attention to that center. He tries to take up all his sexual energy and convert it into ojas. It is only the chaste man or woman who can make the ojas rise and store it in the brain. That is why chastity has always been considered the highest virtue. A man feels that if he is unchaste, spirituality goes away. He loses mental vigor and moral stamina. Do you feel strong by the conservation of energy, is the question. Brahmacharya is tested by the strength that one recognizes within. The virtue is not for parading it outside, but for the utilization of the conserved power towards a higher purpose. Unnecessary activity of the senses wastes energy. The Shandajya Upanishad says that in purity of the intake of things there is purity of being. In the acts of seeing, hearing, tasting, smelling and touching, we have to contact only pure things. Any single sense left uncontrolled may nullify the effects of control over the other senses. As the Mahabharata points out, we become that with which we associate ourselves, which we serve for a long time, and which we want or wish to become. By constant thinking, brahmacharya is therefore an act of all-round self-control. The brahmacharin is always cautious, and no one should have the hardihood to imagine that he is wholly pure and safe. To be able to realize God, one must practice absolute continence. Sages like Sukhev are examples of an Urvareta, 
one whose energy flows upwards. Their chastity was absolutely unbroken. There is another class who previously have had discharges of semen but who later on have controlled them. A man controlling the seminal fluid for 12 years develops a special power. He grows a new inner nerve called the nerve of memory. Through that nerve he remembers all, he understands all. Loss of semen impairs the strength, but it does not injure one if one loses it in a dream. That semen one gets from food. What remains after nocturnal discharge is enough, but one must not know a woman. The semen that remains after nocturnal discharge is very refined. The law has kept jars of molasses in their house. Every jar had a hole in it. After a year, they found that the molasses had crystallized like sugar candy. The unnecessary watery part had leaked out through the hole. The sex energy can be controlled and diverted from the sex purpose and used for aesthetic an artistic or other creation, and productiveness or preserved for heightening of the intellectual or other energies. Entirely controlled, it can be turned into a force of spiritual energy also. This was well known in ancient India and was described as the conversion of Ritas into Ojas by Brahmacharya. Ritas, the sex fluid, consists of two elements, one meant for sex purposes, the other as a basis of general energy. And if the sex action is not indulged and the sex fluid is prevented from being spent away, it turns into ojas. The whole theory of brahmacharya is based upon that by the yogis. Many are the keys to health and they are all quite essential. But one thing needful above all others is brahmacharya. Pure air, pure water, and wholesome food certainly contribute to health. But how can we be healthy if we expend all the health that we acquire? How can we help being paupers if we spend all the money that we earn? There can be no doubt that men and women can never be virile or strong unless they observe true brahmacharya. What, then, is brahmacharya? It means that men and women should refrain from carnal knowledge of each other. That is to say, they should not touch each other with a carnal thought. They should not think of it even in their dreams. Their mutual glances should be free from all suggestion of carnality. It is not possible for a person enjoying sex to get rid of the desire for it. Hence, research of the scriptures done by people in our country has led to the discovery that the path of brahmacharya is the best. The best cure is to become unfamiliar with sex. Once you stay away from sex for one or two years, then you forget all about it. That is the nature of the mind. If it goes near it, it will become restless. The mind has been separated from its familiarity. If you stay separate from it, then the mind stays away from it and will forget it forever. It will never remember it again and will not go there even if you want it to. The vital energy of one who conserves his vital fluid is greatly enhanced. Even if he becomes ill on account of his past karma, the strong vital energy will prevent the disease from assuming serious proportions. He will make a speedy recovery and overcome its consequent weakness much sooner. Suppose a non-celibate takes one month's time for complete recovery. The celibate would get well within a week. Brahmacharya or spotless chastity is the best of all penances. A celibate of such spotless chastity is not a human being but a god indeed. To the celibate who practices unbroken brahmacharya, what is there unattainable in this world? By the power of unbroken brahmacharya, one will become just like me. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it is helping you on your journey. Please like, subscribe and comment down below if you like the video. Good luck with your journey.